Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Who was Tempest Storm? In the 1950s, when artists such as Lily St. Cyr, Blaze Star and Evelyn Treasure Chest West were regularly featured in tabloids and popular magazines, Tempest Storm may have been the most famous exotic dancer of them all. How Tempest Storm gave you all you wanted! Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Tempest Storm, the last queen of burlesque. Burlesque is a form of variety show that is comedic and provocative and features a female chorus, solo dances, slapstick skits and songs. It may also feature striptease acts, although not necessarily. Let's have a look at the life of Tempest Storm, who was credited for bringing the art of striptease to the masses. Tempest was easily one of the best known and highest regarded burlesque performers of all time and was an active part of the burlesque community right to the end. Burlesque Hall of Fame executive director Dustin Wax told the Review Journal, she will be missed terribly in the burlesque community and well beyond it. She was the last of the great legends in the golden age of burlesque, added her long-time friend and business partner Harvey Robbins. She was perhaps the biggest of all. Oh, where to start with the story of Tempest Storm? Should we begin with the time an impetuous young Massachusetts senator named Jack Kennedy swept her into his embrace? or the time Elvis Presley vaulted the hedge around her Las Vegas hotel pool and declared himself as horny as a billy goat in a pepper patch. She had the toughest life you could imagine. She is a sexual assault survivor. One morning she wakes up and finds her stepfather on top of her. She had many struggles that were enough to send anyone into deep depression. But this woman finds her way to get up and stand tall, she fights back against destiny and pursues her dream. She hits the stage and becomes a burlesque dancer, soon after a legend. She knew John F. Kennedy and Elvis Presley in person and was a friend of Marilyn Monroe. That still does not change the obvious and undeniable fact that Tempest Storm has built her own career as a dancer and had already created her own history as big as the world itself. It is tough to say which of her many conquests, on stage or off, best demonstrates the power that strategically placed pasties can hold, but let's start with this one. One night Tempest Storm was performing, as usual, to a packed house filled with goggle-eyed gents. Where does not matter, it was a lavish hotel ballroom in Las Vegas or New York. It was an upscale theatre in Boston or Atlanta. The attraction was the same, a voluptuous red-haired vamp who took in the cheers of her salivating audience with a coquettish smile. Then occurred the climax every man came for, the moment when the star would slip expert fingers behind her neck, loosening the straps on the famous and voluminous brazier of the breast-obsessed Eisenhower era. Peering past the footlight, she saw a patron come rolling to the foot of the stage in a wheelchair. He took one look at Tempest Storm's ample charms and reared back his head, all the way from the stage she could hear him holler, Heal me! Did she? I tried, said Tempest Storm. The lucky stiff got what movie stars, millionaires, pop singers and politicians all wanted, the undivided attention of the world's most famous burlesque performer. One of the biggest stars of the 1950s American underworld scene, with its nightclubs, jazz musicians and comics, was the classy and marvellously endowed performer Tempest Storm. She starred in a notorious erotic art film called Teaserama, with the equally acclaimed Betty Page. The southern redhead caused considerable controversy in the late fifties when she married the black buckaroo Herb Jeffries, a handsome African-American singer and actor, and a decade and a half later Storm astonished a generation of rock and rollers by being the opening act for the James Gang when they played Carnegie Hall. More than 50 years ago she was dubbed the Girl with the Fabulous Front and told by famous men she had the best two props in Hollywood. She was one of the elder stateswomen of female empowerment. Storm was famously a Leap Day baby. The famous burlesque performer was born in Eastman, Georgia 
as Annie Blanche Banks. She was the daughter of a sharecropper, leaving school in seventh grade and working as a waitress. Storm's ambition and talent, as well as her perfect bust, enabled her to rise from a life on a rural cotton farm to a front-stage superstar. At age 14, she married a member of the Marines to escape from her abusive parents. The marriage was annulled after 24 hours. After enduring violent abuse at home, she left her home at the age of 15 when she was in 7th grade. She married a shoe salesman and after six months left to pursue a career in Hollywood. She was working as a cocktail waitress when a customer told her she'd make a great strip tease performer. Self-conscious about her crooked teeth and rural drawl, she never went on an audition. I used to go to the movies and I'd tell myself the stars were backstage, right behind the screen, and someday I'd meet them, she once said. At 22, she was working as a cocktail waitress with two traumatic failed marriages already in the scrapbook, and no plan for the future, when her life suddenly changed. Banks moved to Hollywood and began working as a chorus girl. A gentleman I was waiting on told me I should be a dancer she remembers. Blanche hadn't shown off any dance moves while slinging drinks, so she responded with something along the lines of, Huh? There she became friends with next-door neighbour Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn and I were very good friends. In Hollywood we used to live next door. She had a rough life too, but where she made a mistake was that she dwelled on it. I chose not to do that because that makes you hate the world. So what happened? It happened. In 1951, Storm landed an audition with Follies Theatre talent manager Lillian Hunt. She didn't understand what exactly she was auditioning for. Do you think my breasts are too big to do this? she asked. Hunt barked out a chuckle. They don't make them too big in this business, she responded. Annie Banks' transformation into Tempest Storm had begun. The list of famous acquaintances, friends and fans would continue to expand, with Rat Pack superstars, classic rockers like the James Gang, and in the 21st century, musician Jack White. Within a month, she'd upped her pay from $40 to $60 per week, and Hunt said the new performer needed a stage name. Offered a choice between Sunny Day and Tempest Storm, the entertainment icon said, Well, I said, I guess it might as well be Tempest Storm. She legally changed her name six years later shortly after having her breasts insured for $1 million by Lloyds of London. Storm has performed extensively throughout the US, UK and Canada, and has featured in countless men's magazines. Her list of film credits include Russ Mayer's French Peep Show, Paris After Midnight, Striptease Girl and Irving Claw's Buxom Beauties. Storm's best-known film is most likely Claw's cult classic Teaserama, which also starred Betty Page in her last mainstream feature project. When she performed in Europe, she refused to remove her G-string on stage, even though strippers there were expected to perform completely in the nude. I do a nice act, she told the bookers. They made an exception for her. Storm wouldn't doff all her clothes, but she did give her audiences what they wanted. She'd often close out her routine by leaning backward while rotating her chest, sending the spangles on her pasties spinning like helicopter blades. Men inevitably leapt to their feet to get a better look, whooping and cheering. Soon she'd be the highest paid exotic dancer in the US. She'd date Elvis Presley for a while. Elvis Presley tried to keep up with his girlfriend. He gyrated violently. He thrust his hips. He had some good moves. I don't think I could teach him anything, Tempest Storm said, recalling her nights on the dance floor with the king of rock and roll. But maybe I had more experience. The flame-haired Storm shook her groove thing night after night on stages across the country. Tempest Storm was already a star when she took up with Elvis. This was the so-called golden age of burlesque. But in Portland she was even more than a star. Sixty years ago, before she met Presley, she put the often overlooked little city into national headlines. Among her well-publicised, or at the very least highly rumoured, Mickey Rooney, Louis Armstrong, Sammy Davis Jr., gangster Mickey Cohen, and even John F. Kennedy. She said in an interview once that Frank Sinatra introduced her from the audience during a concert, saying, She taught me how to dress. And when the crowd applauded, Sinatra added, you thought I would say she taught me how to undress. 
Portland in the early 21st century is well known for its almost anything goes in this industry, but burlesque back during the Eisenhower years verged on the upscale. Few Americans viewed strip tees as demeaning to women. The word sexist hadn't yet been coined. It was simply entertainment and big business. Storm pulled in a million dollars at the box office in just her first four years of performing, at a time when the average household's annual income in the US was about $3,500. Even more important to her, she did it by trafficking in titillation, not the in-your-face lap-dancing style you'll find at your typical strip joint today. But Storm wanted a simpler life, and she wanted control over her own professional destiny. That's why she and Becca ended up in Blue Collar Portland, where Storm thought she could eventually give up performing while staying in the game as a theatre owner. The newcomers didn't get a free pass to the top of the heap. The capital's chief competitor, the Star Theatre, decided to fight hard for its leading place in the city's burlesque scene. The Star hired Becca's ex, a California-based exotic dancer who went by the name Arabella Andre. The star's marquee promoted her as John's other wife, and Andre was still hung up on Becca, or maybe she feared having to compete against Storm on stage. She threatened to throw acid in my face, Storm told the Oregonian years later. One night the doorbell rang, my husband answered the door, she was standing there with a glass of liquid, and she threw it in my face. It was only water, but it was terrifying. The star didn't realise what she was doing, the harassment worsened in Portland. Arabella Andre was one of the reasons Storm and Becca had left L.A. I'd go to the cleaners and come out, and she'd be there in the parking lot, Storm said. She was following me. Late one night, after Andre spotted her ex-husband alone at a restaurant, Storm was out of town doing a show. The former couple got into it. Two men were holding him back. He called me the most filthy names you ever could think of, Andre told a municipal court judge. Why was Becca so mad? For starters, Andre had called him a gigolo. She then took it up a notch, dubbing his new wife that freak, referring to Storm's intimidating 40-inch bust. The Oregonian dutifully provided Tempest's measurements. It wouldn't get any rougher than that during the restaurant face-off. Becca was a lover, not a fighter. Wait till my wife gets here, he told Andre. She'll fix you. A judge ordered Andre to undergo psychiatric tests, but within days Andre was back on the star's stage. For Storm, Portland no longer seemed like a nice place to set down roots and raise a family. She and Becca sold the capital, and they soon divorced. In 1959, Storm married Herb Jeffries, a singer and actor who starred in 1930s movies made for black audiences such as Harlem on the Prairie and The Bronze Buckaroo. Storm would claim that racism cost her bookings and movie roles. The couple, who had a daughter, divorced in 1967. Despite her failed marriages, Storm maintained her belief in romantic love, the real thing, the right man, she wrote in 1987. I still believe that he's out there for me. I still believe that true romance is possible. My faith in the idea just won't die. I don't know why. I've certainly experienced evidence to the contrary. That evidence to the contrary continued to accumulate, but Storm also continued to experience love of a different sort, from an audience. She headlined sold-out shows well into her 60s, and until just a few years ago she still performed now and again. In 2016 a documentary about her life was released. People think it's easy, but it's not, she said of being a top burlesque star. You have to work very hard to get there, and you have to work very hard to stay there. Storm returned to touring, performing in cities around the world throughout the 1950s and 60s. In her later years, she settled into semi-retirement in Las Vegas, where she became a mentor and inspiration to recent generations of exotic dancers. It's just like meeting the Pope, one young dancer said after being introduced to Storm at a burlesque festival. Storm kept her performances clean. Early in her career, she made her own outfits and hired a choreographer so she would be graceful on stage, and was proud she could still pack houses. I did a class act, she told the Oregonian in 2014. Beautiful wardrobe, big band, opening act. It was sexy, teasing, but nothing vulgar. 
Tempest Storm is generally considered to have one of the longest careers of any burlesque dancer. Storm, who moved to Las Vegas in 2005, gave her final performance in June 2010 at a burlesque Hall of Fame reunion show. Later that night, she fractured her left hip, ending her stage appearances. But in 2011, she was interviewed by rocker Jack White for an album called Interview with Tempest Storm, released through White's own company. She began her career in burlesque's Golden Twilight and continued performing into her 80s, not because she had to, but because she could. She died at her home in Las Vegas. She was 93. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Tempest Storm blazed a trail for striptease artists for more than half a century. No wonder she could easily seduce anyone. Sybil Shepherd is also mixed up with these men. Watch how Sybil Shepherd seduced both Elvis Presley and Bruce Willis.